Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to chapel. I had to film this a few days early, and my goodness, it's been raining outside. I wonder if it'll still be rainy when you watch this. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you Lord. for interest, interesting us to do your work. Amen. Amen. Okay, something important in the church was celebrated on Thursday. Do you know what day that is? It was Ascension Day. Do you know what happened that day? Jesus ascended or rose into heaven. Let's read about that in the first chapter of the book of Acts of the Apostles. Acts 1, chapter 3. After his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This is what you have heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized by the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witness in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up and a cloud took him out of their sight. So when Jesus was talking to them, all of a sudden he just started rising and a cloud took him out of their sight and up to heaven. Wow, that's what ascension is. That's rising up. And in Ephesians chapter 1 verses 22 and 23, and Ephesians is a letter written by St. Paul, he explains what happened then. I want you to know about the great and mighty power that God has for us followers. It is the same wonderful power he used when he raised Christ from death and let him sit at his right hand in heaven. There Christ rules over all forces, authorities, powers, and rulers. He rules over all beings in this world and will rule in the future world as well. God has put all things under the power of Christ and for the good of the church, he has made him the head of everything. The church is Christ's body and is filled with Christ who completely fills everything. Jesus wanted his disciples to understand that it is now their time to go out and to do God's work by loving and caring for others and by sharing the news that their sins are forgiven. What does St. Paul mean in Ephesians, though, when he says that the church is Christ's body? Well, when Jesus was on the earth, he used his hands to heal. What can our hands do? Can they heal? Can they put on band-aids? Can a doctor use her hands to heal? Yes. How about someone who cooks you healthy food so you aren't hungry or builds you shelter or for other people who don't have shelter or digs wells for people who don't have clean water? Those are pretty awesome things that hands can do and things like Jesus would want us to do to love and care for other people. How about some, when somebody gives you a hug when you're feeling sad? What about feet? Feet aren't something we talk about a lot in church, are they? Feet are a part of the body, though. And feet can walk over and feet can help somebody. Feet can play soccer or another sport that might help you make friends on a team and be a good friend. How about a mouth? Your mouth is a very important part of the body of Christ. Your mouth can say things that help others. Your mouth can say things that hurt others, too. And we don't want to do that. Your mouth can tell people about the love of Christ. So we want to use our gifts and our bodies to serve God. 
not to say bad things, right, or mean things that don't serve God and help God, not to hit and hurt people, right? We don't want to do that. That doesn't serve God. But when we do use our hands and our feet and our mouths and our eyes and our ears and our nose and our elbows, everything, right? When the church all acts together to do things that love and serve Christ, the pieces of the church, the people in the church coming together and doing those things make the body of the church. And the church is the body of Christ. Jesus told the disciples what to do. And he told them that soon they would be baptized by the Holy Spirit and that they would be his witnesses to the ends of the earth. That's far, isn't it? And thank goodness because Israel is not close to us. And that's where Jesus was. And I'm so glad that his witnesses went out all over the world so that I would one day get to learn about Jesus. Most of you all were baptized with water in church most of you at our church, when you were babies. And when the priest baptized you, he or she anointed you with oil and made the sign of the cross on your forehead. And do you know what he or she said? They said, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. Just like the disciples who went out to show the love of God and share the good news to people all over the earth, so can I and so can you. And we can start with our own little part of the earth right here. Think for a minute about some of the things that we can do to be the body of Christ and how we can use our hands, our feet, our minds, our mouths, and our hearts to do that. And if you can't think of a way right now, you can pray for God to show you. God made Miss Susie loud. Do you know how Miss Susie can use that gift? She can yell at her children. No, that's not how Miss Susie can use her gift. She can read at church. That's one way I can use my mouth. Miss Marie uses her hands to give out mints to people in the service, doesn't she? When they're starting the service so their mouths aren't dry and they can sing and they can read, right? And they don't cough in the middle of church. That's a lovely thing that she does. And she does it because she loves Christ. Our friends at Loaves and Fishes, they use their minds to think of ways to get donated food to hungry people in our community. And they use their hands, their legs, and their whole bodies to move that food and do it. Just wait for all the wonderful ways that God can show you how to do his work. Now, I have something that I want to show you. And I had to do this inside today because it's raining, but also because I didn't want it all to blow away because you've seen how windy it is in my backyard. Okay, so far it has a link for God and it has a link for Jesus and then it has a link for all the disciples, Simon, Peter, Andrew, Matthew, Bartholomew, John, James, Philip, Thomas, Simon, and James. There's only 11 disciples on Ascension Day because, remember, Judas betrayed Jesus. And that's really sad. So, so far it has a link for God because God started it, right? And God sent Jesus, and Jesus sent out the disciples, right? Okay, and if I want to, and I do, I can add, this, add links for others. I can add a link for Will. And I can add a link for Emily. And I can add a link for Father Jim. And I can add a link for Lizzie. And I can add a link for Stephanie. And I can add a link for Owen. And I can add a link for Justice. And I can make more links. And I can add links for Miss Elaine and Miss Joe and Miss Lisa and Miss Mary Kay and Peter, who watches sometimes, and Mr. Gary and Miss Nancy and Mr. Arley. And Miss Doris and Mr. Kim, Mr. and Miss 
Mrs. Kim and Mr. Scott and Mr. Ronnie and Mrs. Jackie and so many other people, all the people in our church. So many people who love to be a disciple of Christ and spread his love and good news. And if you want, you can make a paper chain at home too. And it could have all these people that you know love who love and serve God on it if you want. Or maybe you could use it to write down and record the times that you saw people acting like the body of Christ and doing things to serve the people that Jesus wants us to serve and love, right? Who is everybody, okay? By being his hands and his feet, being the body of Christ. So if you can't write yet, you can get your mom or your dad or your older brother or your older sister to write it down for you. And you can make a link. Look, I'll put Justice's link on here next to Will's, okay? And all I have to do is go like this, and either I can glue it or I can staple it. I just took my paper. Did I show you that well? And now I can glue it or I can tape it or I can staple it after I wrote the names on it. And you can write down, um, if you can write, you can write down how you saw somebody being the body of Christ. Okay, and nobody's too little to be the body of Christ, are they? Nobody's too old to be the body of Christ. Okay, so I know that Owen used his hands for Jesus when he held a scared, hurt bunny this week that they found in the garden who was bleeding. And he used his brain to stay brave and calm while his mom figured out what to do. So I could write that on one of these and make a chain of all the ways that people are being the body of Christ. That would be really cool. And I would write Owen and the bunnies on my chain. And that was really good work, Owen. You really were the body of Christ there to that sweet bunny taking care of God's creatures. And I know that Miss Elaine used her hands to serve Jesus when she worked at the hospital this week. And she helped people after they had surgery. And my friend Brian, who is a pastor, he used his brain to explain some answers to questions I had this week when I was preparing this lesson. And next week, I'm going to give you all a surprise project to work on that will help you share the love of Christ with the body of Christ. So if you want to make a paper chain, a chain of ways you can see God's love spread by people using their bodies to be the body of Christ, you can. If you're tired of too much homework, then you just use your eyes and your ears to notice the beautiful ways that people share God's love. And you can use your mouth to tell them, thank you, and tell them that you see them sharing God's love. All right, so shall we close in prayer today after that long lesson? First, I want to hear your hallelujahs and your concerns that, I, um, that you might have had this week. I heard an hallelujah that Jakey was very hard working this week and that he cleaned and was kind with his words to his family. So good job, Jakey. And Lizzie and Emily finished up their schoolwork and Lizzie graduated from the fifth grade. Yay, hallelujah. And we're going to lift up Justice's great uncle Mike and Father Jim and all of our loved ones from St. Paul's who are on the prayer list and others who we know who need prayer from our lives. What other concerns and prayers do you have? You can say them out loud now, or you can say them in your heart, and God will hear you, okay? All right, let us pray. Lord, we thank you for our blessings, and we ask for your help in our times of difficulties. Give strength and healing to those who, who we love, who need it, Strengthen and give hope to all who need those gifts in our world. We thank you for the ability to use our bodies and our lives to share in your love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, see you next week. And for now, let us go and lo love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Bye.